All right, so uh, welcome everyone uh, to our webinar, Expanding Your Business to the New Nordics, Emerging Opportunities in Engineering. So my name is uh, Torbjörn Amundsen. I am a partner in KPMG Law in Norway, and I'm responsible for the service area called International Business Support. I've been with KPMG since uh, 1999 and worked with international trade of goods and services since 1989. I will be the moderator and guide for this conference today. Um, first, you will hear about uh, FDI and trade trends in Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, which we uh, today call the New Nordic. Then we will have a panel discussion on experience sharing by three Norwegians doing business in the New Nordics. And we will finalize the webinar with a Q&A session. But uh, don't be shy. Uh, if you have any questions as we go along, just uh, write your questions in the chat and we can, we can uh, take, uh, take the questions as we go along. I think that's maybe an even uh, uh, better approach. But uh, obviously, if you have any questions in the end, uh, just post them and we will, uh, we will uh, bring them up to the panel. Now, for practical issues, um, um, the restrooms are where uh, you are, <laughs> so, and the uh, fire exits uh, are also where you are. We, uh, we uh, don't have any directions about those today, but uh, we will tell you that we will be recording this event and the video will be sent to you together with the presentation afterwards. So uh, one of the, pres the one presentation that we will have is, um, it contains a lot of information. So um, uh, don't uh, bother trying to, uh, to copy it all down. Uh, just follow it and uh, you will get it afterwards. So with this opening remarks, I'll give the screens to the, of the, to the organizers of the event uh, for their opening remarks. Dear friends, and first, Marike, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Dear friends in Norway, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to our webinar hosted by Lithuanian Embassy in Norway, Latvian Investment Agency, and Estonian Investment Agency. My name is Marike Geisfeld, and I'm representing Estonian Investment Agency. The Estonian Investment Agency is a unit of Enterprise Estonia, the country's largest support institution for business and entrepreneurship. If you have thoughts about investing in Estonia, Invest Estonia team is the place to start. We offer comprehensive on-stop investment consultancy services free of charge, which are always tailored to meet potential and existing investor precise needs. Estonian Investment Agency will find you the best business opportunities and help you grow and expand. We will do the hard work for you. We will contact the businesses, organize the visits, negotiate with the authorities and assist you further after the investment. How to find us? Investment uh, Agency have an office in Oslo, Oscarskate 27. I wish you all a pleasant day and I hope that our seminar will meet your expectations. And thank you. And screen is yours, Darius. Thank you, Marike. Good morning, Alessamen. Good morning to everyone. They are Higeli Osedere. Uh, my name is Darius Budris. I am a commercial attaché of Lithuania to Norway. Uh, thank you for your interest in uh, the New Nordic, the region that is geographically closed uh, and culturally familiar, but still not sufficiently explored by Norwegian business. In the next two minutes, uh, let me briefly deliver a Lithuanian perspective on why New Nordics might be of interest uh, to Norwegian business. First, uh, Lithuanian, uh, Norwegian business expansion, uh, at least to Lithuania, has proved to be a successful endeavor. The companies uh, that invested a couple of decades ago have been expanding. Their ranks are constantly being augmented by new members. Today, the Norwegian business community in Lithuania consists of uh, close to 300 companies. The varying size, like H Windows Plus, with over 
50 employees, and Kitron like, has more than 700 employees. They are dispersed geographically, as every district possess, uh, possesses uh, its regional economic specialization. At the same time, they are united nationally, uh, uh, as such strong organizations like Investors Forum, like uh, Norwegian uh, Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce, and other branch associations uh, make sure to uh, uh, make sure that their voice is always heard and their needs are always addressed. Uh, second, our labor market is still unsaturated. Out of all Lithuanian labor pool of 1.5 uh, million employees, over two uh, 200,000 work for manufacturing industries. More than half employees uh, uh, speak at least two foreign languages when Norwegian is among top five commonly used. So competitive salaries, one of the lowest unionization level in EU, uh, skilled labor force availability in uh, industrial centers, large talent pool of uh, digitally savvy uh, young professionals. This is what Lithuania has to offer. And that is not all. Third reason, strong governmental support. Establish your business in one of Lithuanian uh, free economic zones and you will forget about uh, corporate profit tax for the next 10 years, no dividend tax, or real estate tax will be applied at all. Next to that, you may receive a substantial financial support covering part of capital investment costs of employee training, R&D grants, and there are even greater benefits for large scale, pro scale projects, what is called green corridor. So if you would like to get more information uh, or maybe your company considers expansion plans, approach us, uh, Lithuanian Embassy, and together with uh, Invest Lithuania, our national um, investment promotion agency. Uh, we will do our best uh, to meet your investment goals. Uh, let me stress, more than 80 Invest Lithuania professionals um, are ready to provide with all the necessary expertise and support for your smooth business setup and further development. Everything from A to Z and completely free of charge. And let me finish with their motto. Challenge us and we will deliver. Tu sentak til alasom deltar idag. Please, Evita. Thank you, Larius. Thank you, Marike. Um, my name is uh, Evita Nedvetska and uh, I am head of uh, office in Norway at uh, Investment and Development Agency of uh, Latvia. So uh, I am based in uh, Oslo, Norway. Uh, so greetings from here. Um, firstly, I want to start with uh, emphasizing how uh, thriving and uh, active uh, Norwegian business community in, uh, in, in Latvia is, and uh, mainly thanks to uh, Norwegian Chamber of Commerce in Latvia um, that has uh, over 100 uh, members and uh, more than uh, 260 and counting, uh, Norwegian companies has chosen Latvia as a place for their business. So uh, Norwegian presence uh, in Latvia indeed uh, is, is very strong. Um, secondly, as investment agency, uh, our services include um, assistance uh, and uh, provision of uh, information uh, of the uh, financial, uh, legal and uh, procedural aspects of uh, doing business um, in Latvia. And uh, as an investment agency, we know that uh, speed matters. And uh, hence, I'm uh, happy to share with you that uh, we have launched a new fast track for large investment projects to Latvia called uh, Green Channel. And uh, the main benefit for you is a two times uh, shorter timing in uh, interaction uh, with the state, uh, including um, uh, permits or um, territorial planning uh, and uh, foreign uh, workforce attraction. And uh, we have uh, way more to offer. So uh, to sum up uh, my opening remarks, um, as I, always say that uh, a good decision is based on knowledge and uh, not only on uh, numbers. Uh, 
So um, let's let's grab a cup of coffee uh, and uh, and uh, have a chat on Zoom uh, uh, to to uh, on on how we invest in Latvia can support you and your journey of uh, doing business in uh, Latvia. And uh, I welcome you to join a thriving uh, Norwegian business community in Latvia. So enjoy the webinar today. Thank you. Um, thank you, Marike, Darius, and Navita. Now, the next topic on our agenda is a 20 minutes presentation of trends that you should know about, uh, and, and facts actually, that you should know about the new Nordics. Uh, it's titled FDI and Trade. Uh, it's about 20 minutes by Zanda Vipule, which uh, is a junior partner at Gateway and Partners. So, uh, Zanda, the screen is yours. No sound, I think. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry. Somehow couldn't find the uh, couldn't find the right uh, place to un uh, unmute myself. Uh, but my presentation should be on. And um, hope uh, that I can uh, put some um, data behind the, um, um, behind the, all of the three presentations that you uh, of three countries uh, that you have seen today, and who, who have um, launched this common project, because uh, it's about three uh, three countries. It's Baltic uh, Baltic countries, Baltic economic outlook trends you should know. Um, uh, so. Technical. So yes, my name is Zanda Vipul and I'm representing Gateway and Partners. Uh, we are a um, market intelligence expert consulting company and actually have been as Innovation, uh, Innovation Norway consultants in, uh, in Latvia uh, and also partially in Baltics uh, from 2009 um, up, till the, up till the time it was uh, here in Baltics. So we are very experienced with um, Baltic and Nordic uh, cooperation. While on a daily basis, we have seven uh, representative offices. We are also uh, have uh, uh, franchise offices in other countries. We have around 25 employees. We know 15 plus languages. So we are helping to uh, understand different kind of market in information to um, um, either to invest or to export to other countries. So we are providing this information and now today we are more um, telling about the facts about the Baltics and uh, putting in um, perspective as well with the Norway. So just to give you a short information about Baltics, just to uh, uh, give an overview. So all um, three Baltic countries have different kind of population. All of them are three different states and with local languages uh, that are uh, different from each other. Like everyone asked whether it's the same. No, it's not the same. We part like Latvians partially do understand some Lithuanians, but only 20% while Estonians uh, are completely different language. It's not the same as in Scandinavia when you can speak uh, Estonia, uh, Scandinavia, Swedish and Danish can understand something. something. So in total, there are 6 million people in um, all three Baltic countries. Um, GDP per capita is uh, really lower uh, as compared to Nor Norway, uh, almost 70,000 uh, euros in Norway, while it's around 15, 10 to 15 in, uh, in each of the Baltic countries. Um, land area, um, uh, like Norway is classified as number six largest country in the European countries, according to land area, then we are like much more smaller comparingly. But at the same time, there is some possibilities there. Well, if you will be looking for some mountains, you will not be find, you will not find them here because our largest peaks are around 300 meters. But um, land territory covered. Uh, at least we have a lot of forest, so you'll free a lot of a lot of uh, uh, forest uh, insights uh, here. So 50 uh, percent is in Estonia and Latvia, while well, in Norway is around 39 um, percent. So just to understand, it's not the mountains you can expect, but we have a seacoast 
uh, and, uh, I'll, and a lot of uh, possibilities here as well. We are uh, part of EU members, NATO, OECD, Eurozone, and uh, actually from 2017, we are classified as uh, also as part of Northern Europe, this new Nordics, which is the topic of the theme of the today's seminar. So um, uh, in overall, uh, before COVID, of course, COVID changes everything. But before COVID, there were numerous flights from uh, per day from Oslo to all three capitals uh, with Norwegian, Air Baltic, SAS, Wieser, and Ryanair. So it was possible to choose different airlines. Uh, there are connections to Oslo, Astamanga, Bergen, Trondheim, even direct ones. Um, overall, like Baltics are um, really uh, seen as a transit corridor and is uh, keen on doing transit between the, the uh, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, CS countries, Russia, and, um, and also uh, from air freight, uh, flight connections, Riga Airport had more than 100 destinations, Lithuania had also 92 unique destinations, Tallinn Airport 30 plus destinations. So there are a lot of connections and ensuring that all three Baltic countries are connected toward the Scandinavia as well as to other countries all over the world. Also, Rail Baltica is one of the key, um, uh, key um, development project that is taking place uh, at the moment and planned till 2026 uh, to make the, um, to connect all three Baltic countries with a direct uh, railway uh, infrastructure so there will be a lot of speed tra traffic and possibility to passengers to move among the uh, between the all three uh, Baltic countries. What uh, what Baltics is proud is diverse talent pool. Um, so the uh, annual net earnings are considerably uh, smaller than in Norway, uh, but um, but we are proud more that it's also adults that speak at least one foreign language. It's similar as well as to Norway. Um, there are two languages and three languages that are spoken as well in all three uh, Baltic countries. And just the percentage of difference, uh, differences, but 60% of the 60-70% of the people speak two or three more languages. When it comes to the, um, digit, uh, the diverse talent pool and what we are proud, Estonia is number 15 in human capital potential maximization. Latvia is proud to be number one EU with the largest share of women in management, while Estonia has, is the second uh, top highest in EU with a 58th of population that has the higher education. Then uh, also three Baltic countries are high, digitally advanced countries. Estonia is proud to have 98% of companies are established online, so there is no paperwork. Uh, at all, and number one in Europe, according to entrepreneurial activity. When it comes to Latvia, then it's number four in the EU regarding the e-government benchmark in 2020, and number one in Baltics in innovations. Well, Lithuania has digitally and technologically skills available, um, technologically skills availability is the highest um, globally. So all of the three countries are digitally advanced countries that is also have the world-class IT infrastructure. So according to infrastructure, uh, Estonia is number five according to Global Cybersecurity Index. So cybersecurity is really highly uh, taken into account in, in, in Estonia and it's in global, uh, globally acknowledged. So 98% of Estonians have ID cards that are regularly and to uh, use to secure, securely identify themselves and utilize e-services. So also it's possible, that's why it's possible to establish all of the companies online and do all of the things online as well. In Latvia, it's number three in the world to use the mobile, according to the mobile data usage. So if it's about the mobile application and possibility to use, then it's about, it, you have to look at the Latvia. Also 5G military test sites in Europe is the first ones here in Latvia. So Latvians are really proud that there are possibility to test in this 5, 5G um, uh, technology development. Lithuania is number three in a EU for mobile 
4G availability. And first globally for public Wi-Fi speed. So Wi-Fi speed is the highest in the public for Lithuania. But all of the three countries uh, are among the top five as knowledge economy leaders among EBRD regions. So there is a lot, to pos a lot of possibilities in, um, uh, in technology developed countries that are ready to move in innovations and to help you as well uh, to, uh, to keep the same development level as in Norway. As regards what has been in the past done with the Norwegian FDI stocks in, in Baltics and how the investment climate has been in here in Baltics. So you can see that there is um, um, on the, so here on the left side, there is FDI outstanding stocks in total from Norway to, towards the Baltics. And then it, on the right side, it's like how much percentage from total investments are given in the, for each country. So um, uh, you can see that uh, on, uh, left side that there, Latvia has been uh, uh, has had the most um, uh, investments from um, Norway uh, and from 2011 2000, 2016 well, as well uh, all of the Lithuanian Estonian there has been really growth tendency up to 2014 2016 but the decrease is there slightly uh, with the possibility to free trade uh, since 2017, but again, it's growing tendency while um, um, growing towards the 2020. As yesterday, we had already small discussion that mostly it is because the, um, um, yeah, I, I guess in the questions and answers, there will be the explanations regarding that one because there is limit less already maybe from the um, uh, cost effectiveness, but we are the Baltics are growing into the knowledge and talent pool that is still possibility to use. As from the direct investments from the total portfolio, Norwegians have been very much active in uh, the investing in total uh, Baltic countries. Uh, eight to seven percent um, from three to seven, eight to seven, uh, seven percent to Lithuania and Estonia, uh, Lithuania and Latvia. Well, Estonia, has, which has receiving uh, overall the most uh, direct investment, is slightly lower share, but it's still uh, one to five percent in overall. When it comes to down to the sectors, uh, what it is very good thing is exactly invested. So we will take a small example of Estonia, where we can see the breakdown of Norwegian FDI by industry on the right side. So there is diversified pool of activities where it is exactly invested. So in the past, it has been more in wholesale and retail trade uh, with 50% investments. Then um, more and more activities and currently it has been growing in professional and scientific activities. Financial insurance activities as well has been part of the activities and manufacturing has been a stable but um, a concrete part all, of, all over the time. Well, other activities is more and more growing also in Estonia, but um, uh, the well, the FDI cost uh, FDI, uh, for example, has been dropping in Estonia. It's still um, there is um, investments done in different kind of areas and different kind of uh, aspects of industries. When it comes to the Norwegian trade with Baltic countries, then uh, Norwegians um, export uh, uh, to export to Baltics, uh, while on average, it's uh, like one, uh, one to $200 uh, million do uh, dollars, uh, per, um, uh, per countries, then uh, it has been growing and has been stable more or less to, to Latvia and Estonia. Well, it has been growth in Lithuania, which is more due to increased sales of petro petroleum oils and crude, uh, most probably connected to LNG, uh, since Lithuania is the only um, country in Baltic region that has the LNG facilities and port. Regarding the Norwegian imports from Baltics, uh, then um, uh, there has been um, growth tendency more in Lithuania. While it's all of them are stable and Norway is, all, Norway is also uh, connected to um, all three Baltic countries and importing the goods from, the, uh, Nor uh, from Baltics. Well, um, taking a look more deeper in uh, regarding what it is exactly what is uh, imported. 
Um, so we can take a look a little bit of Estonia. So um, Norwegians export mainly uh, fresh and chilled fish or motor vehicles and telephone sets. This has been like top product uh, exported to, to Estonia. Well, it comes to import, then it's furniture or more uh, detailed, it's prefabricated buildings and as well builders, carpentry from wood and not assembled wood. So wood is the key, uh, key, um, key um, trade um, material products that are imported from the Baltic, uh, from Estonia exactly. So it's uh, just that uh, in-depth insights uh, is uh, made for Estonia because uh, um, um, yes, actually in, um, in our last uh, year, we uh, made the insights about what it is exactly how the Norwegian capital presence is in Estonia. Uh, so that's why there is slightly more information in Estonia, but it is similar and partially uh, in uh, all other Baltic countries, but the differences are, of course, there uh, depending on the country situation, et cetera. So just to give you a short overview, what it is, uh, what kind of, uh, how the Norwegians have been acting here in Estonia. Um, so, and um, just to give you an overview as well. So, uh, to give a summary of Norwegian investments in Estonia, then Norway exports, as we were uh, previously as well saying, then it's more or less equal, uh, while well, import has been growing. At the same time, FDI is, uh, has been decreasing. So Norwegian own companies, so number of companies has been decreasing, but at the same time, the companies that are present in Estonia, uh, they have been growing more and more. So uh, the companies, um, according to turnover and the profit has been increasing 43%. The profit has been 76 million euros uh, in 2019 and has been increasing by, uh, by 31% from 2016. Number of employees, there are more and more people employed as well uh, by Norwegian companies. And when it comes to the manufacture, uh, what kind of sectors has been there, then manufacturing is the key sector that is uh, having the most turnover. So 37% of man in manufacturing, wholesale and retail trade, 25%, financial insurance activities, 16%, real estate activities, information technologies, and more and more these other companies are coming into the uh, Baltic countries. So according to the top performers, so you can see uh, still see similar companies maybe as Norway, uh, Luminor, uh, which is the Norwegian, Swedish, and now bought by um, US private companies as well. Uh, this uh, previously known as DNB Bank. Um, this Luminor uh, is the top, uh, top per uh, performer according to the turnover and also in uh, number of employees, number two. Orkla. Orkla has been very active in Baltic countries, investing in different manufacturing uh, activities. So Orkla is the present here as well. Moller Auto, or, uh, 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 that has distributing the um, uh, uh, vehicles, is one of the top um, companies as well, both Norwegian investment in, in Estonia as well and as a company in, a, in a Estonia and Baltic countries. Uh, and top three by number of employees, there are additionally rating group one, which is also active both in Latvia and Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia as, and Lithuania as the, one of the key players. And number of profit, Linsto has been reaping a lot of profit uh, from Baltic countries. Glamox has been working very hard as manufacturing company in, in the Baltics in order to grow uh, the profit. And Kave Group as a real estate investor in, uh, has been um, expanding the portfolio in the last five years as well uh, in uh, Estonia. So all of the activities, uh, uh, companies are very much active in uh, Norwegian, uh, active in a local, um, uh, local environment. So, um, so for example, Norwegian owned companies in Estonia. So like, despite that uh, the number of companies uh, has been dropping, but actually it's uh, more that the, the known non-active companies are not submitting annual reports anymore or understanding that they'll not be doing anything as, uh, for a while. So, but their turnover has been increasing significantly. So you can see manufacturing is really um, the top industry that is 
um, despite the fact that there are less by number of the companies, but they are very, very stable and having the largest share of the uh, turn, uh, turnover and number of employees. And the wholesale and retail trade and uh, more and more is uh, coming into the professional, scientific and technical activities because more companies established. Uh, well, the turnover is maybe not that large in, uh, from, as compared to uh, the large Oracle group, and, um, uh, but it, they are still active in the, uh, in the market and, uh, and using the possibilities here uh, in Baltic countries. So what is the major industries in manufacturing? So uh, Oracle group has been definitely the largest. Uh, Glamox, uh, manufacturer and distributor lightning solutions, our top uh, company as well. Um, uh, Dagoplast, plastic film manufacturing, producing garbage bags, cable protectors, biodegradable and compostable bags, is one of the key manufacturer who is also having the activities here in, Balti uh, Balt in Estonia. So model tech, a modular buildings uh, producer, also ensuring the, um, uh, the prefabricated uh, housing are the top exported uh, product in, uh, from Estonia to Norway. Trimtex Group, wholesaler, sport, uh, manufacturing wholesaler sportswear. Lebo Group, non-domestic cooling and ventilation equipment. Masket Group, electrical equipment manufacturers, battery chargers. Aklima Baltic, a textile producer, uh, mainly made from wool, jackets, and head headwear. So all of these companies are present and strong here in, uh, here in Estonia. So similar activities also in other Baltic countries. So uh, some examples of the, what kind of products are uh, worked in um, manufacturing. And since we were also making the, some insights from uh, Latvia, then what kind of largest manufacturing insights uh, as well here in, uh, in Latvia. So Orkla is definitely the largest um, doing wholesale and uh, manufacturing of food products in, in Latvia and have been uh, streamlining their activities. Livonia Print, uh, one of the largest printing plant and bindery uh, based in, uh, in Riga. Um, uh, metal structure for buildings, professional shop lifting for retail chain stores, central heating radiators and boilers, wooden houses, designs, manufacturers and supplies of LNG fuel systems, and manufacture of model housing systems. So you can see that there is very much diversified portfolio of various manufacturing companies that are present in Baltic countries. Um, uh, and uh, they have been using and still are using the um, Latvian and Baltic uh, and Est Estonia and Lithuania as well, uh, possibilities in export uh, insights and manufacturing. I have to apologize that I don't have the Lithuanian insights, but um, I guess these were, uh, the, the, I was able to take it uh, just by scratch, but I know also that Lithuania, uh, Norwegians have been very, very much active in Lithuania uh, as um, uh, Atea group has been, uh, is exactly going through Lithuania and, they're again uh, and uh, covered in all three Baltic countries. And um, they're very, very much active Norwegian capital presence here in all three Baltic countries. I hope you had uh, some good overview of uh, what is taking place exactly in, um, from Norway towards the Baltics with the detailed insights. Uh, so um, yeah, we're uh, here to help you as well uh, in case you need an overview of different markets and insights. And uh, hope uh, you have, because uh, the, uh, the question and answers afterwards will be very much interesting. What is the actual practical insights? Because mine was more fact-based uh, insights of what is happening place in general. But to have the feeling, I give the floor back to uh, Tjorborn in uh, a Q&A session. If, or if there are some questions, you are free to ask as well. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, I think <laughs> I think you I think you might have blown us all away there with uh, with so much uh, concentrated facts on such a small time. But uh, no worries. We will share the presentation and the data afterwards. So uh, now we are moving into the next topic of today's webinar, which is a 30 to 40 minutes panel discussion uh, with questions and answers uh, along the way. 
uh, where we also try to uh, convey some experience sharings about doing business in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Uh, before we start, uh, we would like to ask the panelists to give a brief uh, one to two minutes presentation of themselves. Um, we have Neil Strai uh, from Ticano, we have Lorit Scheide from Noor Partners, and we have Hans Petter, who is uh, a managing director at Ketron. Now, uh, we will start, uh, we will give you one to two minutes each so that everybody can understand who you are, where you're coming from, and, and your, how long you have been working in the Baltics. You know, why are you here in this panel? We start with you, Nils. Hello, everybody. My name is Nils Ray. Um, before I start with today, I would, I would uh, describe a few words about my, my history, um, my connection to the Baltics. Um, my experience is mostly from Estonia, but uh, also from Lithuania and Latvia. It started actually in 2002, 2003, um, where we considered to move production from Norway. And finally, in 2004, we established a um, production site later on an engineering company and grow that to 80 employees um, quite on a high standard and um, that was of course uh, low cost uh, was one of the motivation available competence business culture flexibility short delivery time to norway and so on Today I'm representing Tecano, who is a high skilled engineering company uh, with a historical background from oil service uh, which have now turned uh, more into uh, aquaculture and renewable. So today we have three uh, main keystones, which are a uh, load handling system for aquaculture. We have lifting system for on and offshore use. And we also have um, 3D compensated gangway for accessing um, offshore, in offshore installation and renewable uh, wind farm. Yeah. So thank you, Nils. Um, next on my list is uh, you, Laurits. Yes, thank you for having me. My name is Laurits Guide. I'm, uh, I'm the CEO of No Partners. Um, the first um, business was established in, uh, in Latvia, in Saldus, in 1994. Um, and at that time, there were four foreign lines out from from, uh, from Latvia, so you had to, to go to Riga to get the phone call out of, out of the country and you have to go to the post office to send a fax. So the development in, in, um, in Latvia have been tremendous. Uh, but anyway, New Partners is owned by Libra Group. We have uh, three manufacturing companies in, in Saldus, which is sort of the logistic uh, hub in, in Latvia. It's uh, more or less um, one hour to Riga, one hour to event space and one hour to leave by. Um, so uh, we manufacture GRP products, glass fiber reinforced uh, polyester products for strategic customers um, uh, and have a long range of uh, variety of, of products to strategic customers. Um, we are part of a Norwegian cluster. We're the first company establishing in, in, uh, in, um, in Saldus. And uh, the cluster is now of Norwegian companies, that is. Uh, 12 companies with a, with a revenue of 40 million euros and 270 employees only in, in Saldus. Um, we are also, um, no partners are also established a new company to, uh, to, uh, to put up uh, um, some facilities in Lipaya and the harbor of Lipaya to be closer to, to also the exports there. Thank you. So thank you, Lauritz. And uh, last but not least, uh, Hans Petter from Kitron. Yes, uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on the panel. I do represent uh, Kitron in this uh, panel. And uh, myself, I have been uh, engaged in, in business with Lithuania in particular for more than 20 years. I think I was in Lithuania the first time in 1997 and have been part of, of moving activities from Norway for at least three companies into Lithuania. In, in specifically in Panvishis and, and uh, now with Kitron also into Kaunas. Kitron uh, is a global electronics manufacturing company. 
meaning we, we do manufacturing services. And, and of course, when we entered into Lithuania back in, in year 2001, 20 years ago, the big driver was, of course, cost. And, and cost, geographical location, cultural uh, uh, similarities and, uh, to, to the Scandinavian region. Those were the primary. Over the years, this has uh, changed significantly. And, and uh, today, uh, in the whole Keytron group, uh, we do about four billion knock worth of business. About yeah, about a billion knock is coming out of our plant in uh, Kaunas. In we have about seven hundred and fifty employees and a, and a plant of thirteen thousand square meters down there. So it has been a tremendous adventure in, in expanding the business down there. And in our little pre-discussions yesterday, we, we um, talked about what, uh, what's the motivation going forward. And, and uh, we, we do see that there is a strong uh, business uh, opportunity for us uh, serving the Central European market from Lithuania because of many of the factors that brought us there, cost, availability of workforce, and, and more than anything, the utilization of the capital assets we have down there. So it's been a success story so far, and, and we do expand, expect to expand from here. All right. So thank you so much, Solvio, for these uh, initial remarks. Now let's move on to our panel talk. Uh, we have been asked to cover three main topics today. So I just list them so that people uh, uh, can sort of know where we are. The first one uh, are what are the main gains long term establishing production or uh, indeed business in these three countries? Uh, what has changed in the countries since you entered? Uh, we have uh, some of you have mentioned a little bit already, but let's go a little bit in, more into that. And what would you advise to other companies in Norway that are considering nearshoring or establishing themselves in the new Nordic? So while we have you here, uh, Hans Peter, let's continue. Uh, what are the main gains long term for establishing in, in these three countries, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, I can speak mainly to, to uh, Lithuania since we, uh, through a thorough selection process back in in, in the late 1990s ended up in Lithuania. Uh, it could have been any one of the Baltic countries actually. And, um, but of course, back then it was cost-driven, as I said. Now, what drives us is that we, we do see uh, a, uh, a perfect uh, geographic location. We do see a uh, very good ability to serve the, the central European market in, in the, the electronics world from Lithuania. And, and we do see that we are, we are able to uh, have a very efficient and, and quality uh, driven production in that region. And lately over the last, let's say five years, we have also moved a number of, of corporate functions that are more driven towards indirect functions to, to uh, further strengthen our competitiveness. And that's a, an entirely different ballgame because we are now seeking to attract a different kind of, of worker. It's, it's more the young, uh, highly educated worker who will, who will uh, serve those functions. So that's, that's the next ambition we have. It's actually well on the way. Yeah, so uh, we'll get back to that in a second. But what you're saying is you're moving from, uh, let's say, manufacturing and a little bit up in the value chain there. In, in in terms of competence and uh, and uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's no secret that uh, the site that I'm managing in southern Norway has uh, been the uh, <clears throat> the site that has transferred out a, a significant portion of, of the uh, uh, business to Lithuania. Mm. But to that success story, it's possible. Uh, it has enabled us to, to uh, make significant changes in our operations in Norway. And, and now we have regained the same business level in terms of revenue in Norway as we had prior to the first transfer to Lithuania. So it has been a tough uh, transfer period, but it has also enabled us to create new business opportunities in Norway. Okay, so thank you. Uh, Nils, uh, Nils from Tucano, uh, anything to add? On this, what are the main gains long term? Yeah, well, um, as Hans Petter mentioned, um, most of us uh, started our journey to the to the Baltics or the New Nordic um, 
um, because we want to, to reduce our production costs. Um, but today it's, um, it's definitely one of the driver. But I would say also, I would like to highlight that um, the new Nordic country is uh, give you an easy access to the EU market in terms of VAT, custom clearance, taxes, et cetera, which actually can be um, um, a, a good location for, for further uh, expansion of your company. Mm -hmm. Like a strategic uh, hub. Definitely. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine geographically, and uh, and uh, when you some when you heard some of the facts also uh, of the rankings uh, of the talent pool that you have there. So, so let's move a little bit because I want to cover all these three questions first, and then we can uh, move a little more free uh, with uh, afterwards. So I, I move on to you, Lauritz, and uh, and ask you. What has changed in these countries since you entered uh, back in the days? Uh, well, a lot of change, of course, uh, both cultural-wise and uh, and infrastructure-wise. Uh, but it's um, the, the the same as the other um, in the panel uh, came for the for the labor force, and uh, in uh, in Norway there's a shortage of labor force. So either you import the the, the labor or you or you put the production where the labor is. Um, but the, the main uh, development has been predictability, predictability and the infrastructure with banking, government, uh, information and, and transportation at least. Uh, now it's as, uh, as was shown in the slides in the presentation, it's easy to, to travel from Norway to, to the Baltic. Uh, it's like taking the bus, yeah. <laughs> it's more or less like taking the bus. I saw Olesund where it's we are cheaper. situated. Was, <laughs> I it's saw that Olesund, Olesund was, was not in the map, but we also have direct flight from, uh, with Visa from, from Olesund. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really like taking the bus, yes. Fun fact uh, from my side, uh, if I, I live in Oslo, and if I go by taxi to visit my um, old mother outside Oslo, that's more expensive than visiting one of my clients in Riga including the taxi uh, to the airport and the air freight ticket and the taxi to the client's office. <laughs> so it's, um, if you buy your tickets a little bit ahead though. Uh, oh, yeah. but, well, you should say that, uh, okay, the, the Norwegian embassy and Norwegian chamber of commerce uh, is uh, also very helpful and, yeah. uh, and also very accommodating for any requests that the companies have. So it's, uh, it's a no-brainer to uh, to um, to do some some business in uh, in Atlantia where where my experience comes from. Yeah. So um, if we then uh, cover the last topic uh, in this uh, uh, in this first round, maybe uh, go back to uh, to Nils first and then Hans Peter. Could you comment on uh, first Nils, then Hans Peter? What would you advise to other companies that are considering? the new Nordics as a, as a way of expanding. Yes, first. I can. Um, yeah. uh, as we discussed in a pre-meeting yesterday, um, I would say that it's quite important to have a clear strategy um, or a clear motivation. Why do you want to, to expand or move? Or what do you actually want? Um, and um, because, uh, well, you will meet um, a different culture. But in fact, I think our Norwegian culture is more different from the rest of Europe than the Baltics are. So, so but anyway, uh, as a Norwegian, you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also say that um, uh, we Norwegian are quite um, trust orientated. We have a trust based approach. Uh, be factor orientated when you deal with uh, when you deal with uh, actually uh, everybody except Norwegian. Hmm. Yeah, I remember we had uh, I, I was hosting a seminar uh, so some years back where uh, there were mostly Norwegian companies and uh, and uh, we asked sort of you know how many of you this was from the building and construction industry how many of you have been working in more than one company you know lots of lands. Uh, more than two companies, uh, three, four, lots of that, you know, then 
So it turns out that a lot of these people had been moving around a bit. And uh, and uh, uh, in one of the uh, one of the panelists later on, he said that you know, uh, in our line of business, still uh, uh, it is like a, a good uh, a good reference from a friend in another company. You know, beats an ISO certificate any day. Uh, so uh, so if uh, if uh, these guys have been working for Skanska and they come to work for me in Hent, and Skanska is happy, I'm happy. You know, uh, that, then the door is open. But what you're saying here is that uh, that uh, uh, the ISO certificates, the the, the facts, the the, the 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 measurable things should also be uh, focused on uh, when you are moving in uh, and doing business here. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and that's right. And uh, uh, so, Hans Petter, uh, what would your advices be? Well, I can only echo what the other panel uh, participants have said. Uh, have a game plan. Contact the uh, Innovation Norway and, and their cooperation partners in, in the countries. That I have um, been around and establishing business on behalf of Kit and another in other corners of, of the world, like Mexico, India, China. So I think the, the value of having access to such a network that can support you when establishing gives a lot of confidence. Mm. It also gives you confidence that the, your typical your banking industry is, is represented with familiar logos and, and names. So entering into into the Baltic region is is by I should say by far the easiest that we have done. Yeah, you uh, said that it was almost more problems in Sweden, or it, it was no different than Sweden, maybe with the wording. Well, that goes back to the Norwegians being uh, culturally different from anyone else, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's, uh, there are differences and we have to relate to them. I, I spent two years uh, commuting back and forth every week to Lithuania as an MD. There are differences, but they are perfectly possible to overcome. Uh, mm. You just have to, to relate to them and understand them. Mm. And, and of all the places I've been, I, I would say uh, Baltic region is, is uh, probably one of the easier ones. Mm. There is a great Norwegian business network in the Baltic region. I think most anyone who who wants to to come and, and establish will will benefit from from visiting those who have done it before. Because yeah. I, at least we have had uh, uh, plenty of opportunity to do that, and 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 we have guided other business acquaintances in that direction, mm. and it has proven successful. So. Chambers of Commerce and you know mm. these kind of uh, arenas. Yeah, mm. I have not come across anyone in the Norwegian business community who said, and basically, very few of us are actually competing. So, so we don't mm. we don't have any anything to to any reason to hide how uh, our experience and, and and what what we believe is is the best approach to, to success in these countries. Mm. Now, um, uh, just uh, a general uh, a general statement from my side or, or to all the attendants, uh, uh, please use the chat if you have any questions. We will uh, try and, uh, uh, and we will try and um, and uh, cater for them. Uh, I've got one question uh, and uh, and that is, um, it seems like the number, or from one of the slides, uh, so it might be wrong, but one of the uh, uh, slides said something that the number of Norwegian companies or uh, companies owned by Norwegian goes down, but but the growth in those who are there is increasing. Um, does this resonate with any of your kind of uh, experiences? Any one of you, Lauritz, or? That 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 uh, that uh, that you you are studying a, de developing your business, or maybe we should leave this question because it was a, a, a question related to the fact of the slides there. I don't have any clear view, but from from uh, from our companies, we are increasing uh, same same ownership, but we are increasing the the operations and the revenue. So that mm. if that can answer it, it it's uh, but we, maybe it's not typical. No, but uh, but uh, when 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 you're doing svogerforskning, as we say in Norway, <laughs> based on my experience, this is uh, entirely correct. So uh, so at least uh, you uh, you have observed that from your own business mm. that, that just, you're uh, growing. Just um, some some uh, 
for the last question you had about advice to Norwegian companies. It's uh, it's my experience that uh, that if you know what you want and done your homework and use the local um, local network that uh, Hans Peter was was talking about, yeah. uh, it you get so much for free if you partner up with someone, make a joint venture, or or mm. uh, or do something, and and then you get what is maybe most important. You get a, a strong local management or yeah. You have to build a strong local management. So, so the the fast track into to doing uh, doing business instead of building up uh, everything by yourself is is actually to partner up and uh, um, or make a joint venture to to get that. And then the culture in, in all culture, it's uh, it's all about managing expectations. If you don't mm-hmm. manage expectations both ways, mutual. Uh, then, then you have sort of lost anyway. So, mm. and in the cultural sense, it's, it's different ways of managing expectations. Expectations, while Norwegian can be uh, quite straightforward, uh, mm. you might take one or two more rounds uh, in, in other cultures. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I was uh, visiting a client in Finland once, and we started with the sauna. <laughs> it was easier <laughs> it was easier than to talk the next day when you have been sitting in the sauna and you know with this uh, uh, and extremely hot of course uh, but uh, I, I know you also Nils you had some views on this yesterday when it came to, to, to strategy and priorities there uh, anything to add to Lauritz uh, there? No but I, I well um, I can underline what uh, Lauritz said about uh, uh, Partners, I would say that if you want to, if, if you have a, a plan to to, uh, to to move to the to the new Nordic country, I would say that start with with um, talk with with the company who are already established there. Mm-hmm. Get some get some uh, some information from them. Now I would say that uh, the, cam- the experience that I have with uh, the Chamber of Commerce, especially from Estonia side, has been quite helpful. And uh, of course, uh, Estonian enterprises, which are um, particular for Estonia, Innovation Norway, uh, has been very helpful. What mm-hmm. you also should consider is, uh, is the, um, the generous uh, program of grants in those countries, which you are not used to from Norway and um, that is definitely beneficial compared to, to many other places. Mm. So there are public programs that can support you and take out some of the risk, the financial risk maybe uh, in, 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 the, in the first phase? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Uh, Hans-Petter, when we talked uh, earlier, you mentioned that, uh, that uh, you were moving up in the, in the um, uh, value chain a bit there with your uh, with, with your activities moving from pure production and manufacturing to to uh, to other uh, uh, functions as well. Um, I, I noticed from the presentation now that was regarding Estonia, but still they are a major exporter of wood products, but they are in fact number five in the global cybersecurity index in the world. So, so there are things, uh, you know, that, that it, it seems that, that there's still kind of the traditional uh, 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 areas that are being uh, considered, but there are potential for growth you, uh, on other areas. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, well, first of all, I want to comment on, on what the other panel said about building that local management team. That, that is vital. I mean, the, the business didn't really take off until I left, so to speak. Yeah, it's the same with me. The less I am in the office, the better it is. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that's that said, there is a transition phase there that is important. With regards to the phase we're in now, uh, we are building... Uh, we're a global company and we are building a center of excellences in, in different places in the world. And we have, there is a number of functions that we are now working on, on, on centralizing in, in Lithuania, mm. uh, where we are working then to, to uh, utilize the, the, I should say, probably the younger generation of very highly educated people mm. uh, to, to take, uh, what is a full control in a global perspective for Kitron on, on, uh, very uh, 
uh, tech-driven processes around the modern procurement in, in uh, sourcing and procurement in, in the electronics industry. So um, that's an area we're exploring. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, when you explore new things, you, uh, you, you identify new challenges. And, and yeah. one of them, these, these people are, are, are very capable. Uh, uh, and then, then they want to see a career plan. They want to see a, mm. a long-term goal. They want to see development. So, so retention for this crowd, this is different challenge versus the one we had for, for the typical manufacturing crowd. Mm. Yeah. The, if they don't see the path ahead of them, then, uh, then uh, you might experience some uh, rin um, that people are leaving or the increase of turnover in, in that kind of stuff. That's what you're saying? That's that's what I'm saying, and, yeah. and uh, it's not a challenge that cannot be overcome. But uh, when I worked in India, we had 20 levels of engineers, on, uh, just to have a career path. Yeah, that's not how it works in Lithuania. But but it's a clear consideration. They they are basically of limited value to the company if they come and stay for a year. That doesn't yeah. do us anything. So we need we need both the competence that they bring aboard from from schooling and, and other experience. And then we need to be able to give them a career path and retain them over time for this to truly have value. So this is a, this is also it's not just a business development thing. It's also an HR maybe policy thing that you should really look for some you know uh, good solutions there. Absolutely, uh, yeah. we have been challenged many many times, uh, and uh, to understand uh, that the term uh, motivation and it's it's by no means just financial. No. Financial is there, but but uh, it's broader than that. So, yeah. so Lauritz and Nils, any 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 famous last words before we uh, open up for more questions on this? Oh, I can just say thank you for for being a part of this, and uh, and don't hesitate to to contact me if they if you need some some. Um, information or you need it's difficult to visit uh, now of course but uh, if we are there we can we can, uh, we can meet up and, and exchange uh, information about mm -hmm. plants and so on so it's okay thank you no but i can i can really underline what Lori said now and and um, uh, i would say that if you have a good plan do not hesitate um, Baltics is definitely a good place to establish your business. Yeah. So uh, 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 I'm just trying to read the chat here. Uh, uh, it's a it's a general one, so everybody can see it. Uh, that there are a lot of uh, in general how many grants, not only for starting a business, but also for further development. Uh, so, uh, so we, we, we will leave it at that. Now, in summary, we have been talking about uh, the main gains, uh, what has changed and, and, uh, and your uh, guys' advice in, in terms of, um, of uh, establishing and, and then maintaining and growing business in the new Nordics. We have touched on the motives regarding costs and competence and new markets, digital infrastructure, talent, secure home country operations in capacity. And you have discussed this uh, strategy, uh, of course, uh, partner or establish yourself, attract staff, retention, things like this. It's always, you know, this is like a Rubik's cube, <laughs> probably at this time. Um, when that was first introduced, I became an expert on making the yellow side. The rest was, of course, crap, <laughs> but the yellow side was always good. But I think that uh, there are many dimensions here that needs to be considered and, uh, and uh, that to uh, maybe visit uh, some of them who have um, gone the path before you, as you say in, in, in Norway, and maybe even uh, moved some of the stones uh, from the path to make it a little bit smoother for those who come uh, after uh, might be a very good idea. So um, on this final note, I can say that uh, I, I think maybe because there are no more questions in the chat and I think we are uh, about three minutes ahead of schedule, but that's fine. Um, any from the organizers side uh, that want to add something before we, uh, we, we, we close for today?
Darius, Edita, or oh, sorry, uh, Evita. No. So uh, then I thank you all for uh, for uh, taking part of this. I thank the I thank the panel. I thank the organizers. Uh, you will all get uh, some uh, material sent out afterwards and a recording of this. And uh, I just uh, wish you a pleasant day. Thank you. Thank you.